Netflix has rapidly become a ubiquitous part of nearly all of our lives, with its incredibly deep, constantly shifting streaming catalog of movies and television series. Usually, the phrase, there's something for everyone, is mere hyperbole, but not in the case of Netflix, which absolutely has something for you whether you're a fan of extreme horror, an actual toddler, or anything in between. Of course, with such an extensive selection, there's bound to be some content that's a bit problematic. Whether it's the material itself, the production's background, or inappropriate scenes, Netflix has put up a surprising amount of material that's drawn controversy for one reason or another. Here's a look at some of Netflix's most controversial offerings. 13 Reasons Why When 13 Reasons Why debuted in 2017, it immediately became a lightning rod for controversy. The story picks up after high schooler Hannah Baker takes her own life, leaving behind a series of cassette tapes that details the reasons for her actions. Via flashbacks, the show depicts disturbing instances of assault, bullying, and Hannah's own final moments. Despite its seemingly self-contained premise, the series was picked up for a second season, providing a fresh round of controversy in 2018. The new episode's more problematic scenes include an explicit depiction of a young man's assault by another man, an incident that nearly prompts a school shooting. To its credit, Netflix has added content warnings before every episode. There's also now a companion series, Beyond the Reasons, to encourage discussions of the issues the show presents. But some continue to label it as mere exploitation. Blue is the Warmest Color 2013 French drama Blue is the Warmest Color won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival despite drawing controversy for its shockingly graphic seven-minute-long lesbian love scene. Comments from lead actress Adele Lexarkoupoulos and Leah Sedu concerning the film's production and director Abdulatif Kashish's reaction to them have only added to the controversy. In a Daily Beast interview, Exarchopolis and Seydoux praised Kashish as a genius, but they also called the making of the film horrible and insisted that neither would do work with him again, with Seydoux saying, in America, we'd all be in jail. Kashish then took his stars to task for their comments, even threatening to take them to court. The film is undeniably brilliant, but with this context, it's tough not to see its more demanding scenes in a new light. Atypical Building a wacky sitcom around a main character with high-functioning autism is nothing if not tricky. Atypical has its heart in the right place, but it also hits every stumbling block along the way. It can be forgiven for failing to put together a complete and accurate picture of the condition, as there are far too many variations along the spectrum for one character to embody them all. But some have taken the show to task for attempting to play up the condition for laughs, while still failing to be insightful or funny. I'm doing research on how to steal a woman, and Bailey is the perfect test subject because she's a skank. Outlets like Huffington Post and Salon have slapped the show with labels ranging from stereotypical to offensive. Creator Robia Rashid and her team have also inspired criticism for failing to consult any actual autistic people. But the series seems to have found its fan base, as Netflix has renewed it for a second season. Perhaps with a little course correction, it can become the shining example of mainstream representation that the autism community was hoping for. For now, it's just more of this. Bazinga! Love Gaspar Noé seems to live to provoke controversy. The mind behind such famously challenging cinematic experiences as Enter the Void and Irreversible, Noé used his 2015 film Love to tell the fairly simple story of the birth, life, and death of a romantic relationship. But Noé being Noé, he told it in a fashion that's anything but simple. Specifically, he included unsimulated lovemaking and shot it all in 3D. In case you were wondering, yes, there is an explosive shot that takes full advantage of the 3D format. Like, no, God! No, God, please, no! No! It's a supremely silly moment in what is otherwise a rather serious and grounded film. Critics generally agree that love was underwhelming, self-indulgent, and strangely unerotic. Even so, without a doubt, the closest thing you'll find to hardcore content on Netflix. If that's your thing, we're not judging. Big Mouth Netflix has generally fared quite well with its original animated offerings, with titles like BoJack Horseman and F is for Family soaking up critical acclaim despite their adult themes and humor. But with Big Mouth, they took a considerable risk. 
An examination of puberty, the show leans heavily on vulgarity and gross-out humor. While some critics have found it to be sharp, funny, and engaging, others have deemed its utter commitment to nastiness a bridge too far. The criticism ranges from supposed confusion over whether the show is aimed at children to its alleged liberal agenda and sideways references to homosexuality and pedophilia. The series has also managed to draw ire for casting Jenny Slate, a white actress, as the voice of a black character. But despite all of the brouhaha, the first season was a significant hit with viewers, and Netflix will be back with more for season two. So, did you guys hear the news? Nymphomaniac Professional provocateur Lars von Trier's Nymphomaniac arrived in two feature-length volumes. It's the story of a woman recounting her devastating romantic history to a seemingly sympathetic older man after she's brutally beaten. Nymphomaniac is not so much titillating as it is psychologically uncomfortable. Of course, it's the lovemaking scenes that stirred up the most controversy, causing the film to be banned in multiple countries. But if it's eroticism you're looking for, you won't find it here. Nymphomaniac is an unforgiving portrait of how its main character's compulsions inevitably ruin her life and the lives of nearly everyone she comes into contact with. And sadly, there's no redemption to be found in its jaw-dropping ending. The Push Netflix's original special The Push stars English mentalist Darren Brown, who wowed viewers with a viral video in which he demonstrated the seeming ability to literally put thoughts into people's heads. This involved convincing actor Simon Pegg that he had always wanted a red BMX bike as a child. I don't know what's going on. What's my name? He's going to be in a pickle jar by two. I know it. But in The Push, he enlists the help of over 70 actors to attempt to put a very different kind of idea into the mind of an unsuspecting Mark. The actors guide an ordinary man named Chris through a series of increasingly bizarre situations. Ultimately, Chris must decide, under intense pressure, whether to push another man from the top of a tall building. Brown isn't actually trying to get Chris to commit murder, just to convince him of the idea. But that's a distinction that walks a very fine line between bizarre prank psychological torture. Chris is enmeshed in a web of lies, and that's important. I need him to feel like there's only one way out when he's told to commit murder. The Paperboy 2012's The Paperboy is the kind of quirky, tonally challenged film that might have come and gone in limited release with few having noticed, despite the presence of bankable stars Nicole Kidman, Matthew McConaughey, and Zac Efron. Though it features stylish direction from Lee Daniels, this melodramatic thriller is kind of a mess and mostly unmemorable, except for one truly weird scene. After Efron suffers a jellyfish sting, Kidman attempts to alleviate the pain by urinating on it. And that may not even be the film's most disturbing scene, thanks to the bizarre prison hanky-panky between Kidman and John Cusack. But it's not just every day that you get to see major movie stars peeing on each other, and that was pretty much all anyone could talk about leading up to the film's release. I don't know what I expected. Stepsisters Netflix's acquisition of Stepsisters, a topical exploration of race on college campuses from dear white people leader Chuck Hayward and master of nuns Lena Waithe, seemed like a no-brainer. But the movie's central premise, in which a black college senior is tasked with teaching a bunch of disgraced white sorority sisters to step, sparked controversy before it even debuted. The film's creators have taken issue with stepsisters being pigeonholed as a cultural appropriation comedy. Waith has pointed out that it has a high degree of self-awareness and that culture is meant to be appreciated and explored by everyone. Many critics have also panned the film for the more conventional crimes of awkward plotting, recycled tropes, and dull dialogue. At a time when race relations is a hot topic in the United States, it seems unlikely that anyone involved in the production could have failed to foresee the flap that it would cause. White Girl Writer-director Elizabeth Wood leaned on a couple of very specific influences for her 2016 indie film White Girl. Writer Harmony Corrine and director Larry Clark's 1995 Provocative Kids, and her own past as a hard-partying girl from the Midwest attending college in New York. White Girl is concerned with matters of power and control, as fresh-faced protagonist Leah loses both as she delves deeper into a lifestyle of illicit drugs and casual relationships. 
After the film's debut at the Sundance Film Festival, Wood was accused of playing to the exploitation crowd in order to shoulder her way into Hollywood. In an interview with Vogue, she responded by saying, "...it's interesting to me that sexuality upsets people more than talking about race or privilege or gender."